problems, worries, sadness, are you seeking solutions? Bible says, do not be anxious about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Choose faith over fear. Hi, I'm Veronica Statch. Welcome to Shalom World's original program, Jesus My Savior, where we bring you moving conversion journeys from all over the world. Our guest was born into an upper caste in Nepal and raised Hindu. But after volunteering at the Mother Teresa House in India, the living gospels were opened up before him. In a country where practicing Catholicism is difficult, our guest has dedicated his life to serving and spreading the truth. Let us welcome Chirendra Satyal. My name is Chirendra Satyal. I was born 62 years ago and live in the capital city of Kathmandu, of Nepal. Before meeting Jesus or knowing who Jesus was, for me, God was a, an alien. God was someone to be feared at the most, not to be found a mysterious being. If there was one, I lived with my Hindu grandparents, my Hindu parents. But after meeting Jesus, after getting to meet people like St. Teresa of Calcutta, I got to understand that Jesus introduced the character of God to us, how loving God the Father is, how forgiving He is, how He gives us energy to forgive, how He lives us, gives us energy not to be worried even amidst worldly problems, no matter how big, to be assured and live in His love. For me, I got to understand that Jesus came and gave witness and proved to us who God was so that we could live happily, safely, I'm so happy to be able to give witness like this in a visual interview about Jesus, my loving Savior. Hello, Chirendra. Thank you for joining us from Nepal today. Thank you. I feel privileged and very happy. So I know you were born into a high caste uh, in Nepal and you were raised Hindu. Can you give us um, sort of a picture of what your childhood looked like? My father and my grandfather came from the privileged uh, priestly Hindu class. And they uh, did the rituals and they did worship for the rulers of the country uh, in those days. So I was the only son in the family. And uh, so that was uh, pretty uh, uh, strict sort of uh, family I was born in, a privileged one, of course. Uh, but my parents, uh, they kept me in a missionary, so-called missionary school, maybe the, the first one opened by the modern day missionaries, the American Jesuits. So my childhood was uh, in a very um, natural surroundings. The capital city was still not built up then, uh, but uh, coming from a Hindu family, but uh, under the uh, guardianship of uh, American Jesuits. So then you went to India, I think, to study medicine. And is that the first place that you encountered Catholicism? I was uh, in a school with this uh, uh, Catholic missionary, the Jesuits here, but uh, since preaching uh, our even a show of Catholicism or Christianity in any way was banned. I really didn't know anything about Catholicism or I never entered a church. So, yes, in Calcutta, when I went there, it was a big city and uh, there was uh, some churches, 
and missionary doing social work and and when I started working with the, the missionaries of the charity, the Mother Teresa sisters and brothers as a volunteer, uh, I noticed that they believed in God and that influenced me a little bit, you know, because their behavior was very good. They were inherently good. They're not forcing themselves to be good, but they were just good from the heart. So there was a place where we had to wash the very old, sick people uh, in that house of Mother Teresa, uh, called the house of the dying, but she called it the uh, uh, Nirman here there. And uh, above that uh, place where you know, we gave, uh, we bathed the people, uh, there was a note, some, there was a note someone had scribbled. Uh, it said, body of Christ. So uh, I wondered, you know, how could that be the body of Christ, you know? But Christ was someone who was there 2,000 years ago, and how does that connect with this body? So later on, I talked with some of the brothers of Missionaries of Charity. They also have Mother Teresa brothers also are there. And they said, come and pray with us. And I joined some prayer meetings of theirs, and that's how the Gospels open up. So Chirendra, I know that you actually got to work with Mother Teresa, uh, or Saint Mother Teresa. Uh, so can you tell us what what was that like? What was what was Mother Teresa like? She was a very humble person. I remember the first time she came into that house of the dying, so uh, as it is called, um, still now. And uh, she went directly to see the uh, maybe the worst of patients, uh, so to call the old people, uh, uh, the old men, and she really bent down on them and she gave them the attention. And I kept on looking at her, but uh, I think she felt that someone was looking at her, but she, she turned towards me and I was just a simple volunteer, you know, and she looked at me and she gave me a very kind smile, you know. So I felt uh, a person like that, uh, well, Siana Opa won the Nobel Prize then, so it was easy to talk to her and all that. At that time, she was not crowded so much by people. So she used to go and meet these patients, and she used to go and clean the toilets you know, by herself. Uh, I found, found her very humble. I found her very sure of herself. Uh, whatever she did, just the small things she did, even the smile, that she gave to me, she's, it was not a very hasty one. So your conversion sort of started around this time. Um, that moment when you finally accepted sort of Jesus as your savior, was that sort of one moment or was it a gradual acceptance sort of of Jesus or did it sort of accumulate? I think before I recognized or God revealed himself to me as Jesus, I think uh, before that, it was uh, the realization that God was alive. Um, and I had to uh, later pinpoint and uh, get the revelation that it was only Jesus, you know. So uh, later on, I think when I read the Gospels and, uh, um, and prayed with the brothers, uh, then I understood that... Uh, yeah, it was Jesus who was the incarnate one and was revealing himself to me. And he was alive, so it was something I could not express in words. Or It was something uh, beyond words. And I was very happy inside and a uh, uh, little bit carefree about uh, whatever anyone would say or anything like that. Uh, I started praying with the brothers a little bit in a very informal way. Uh, I had not yet entered the church up to that point. It was only after that I entered a church and, you know, I sought to, uh, to be baptized. Yeah, but I see. But yeah, it, it went, this went on for more than one year for me in Calcutta. Beautiful. So you did mention that you did get baptized, of course, eventually, but I know that it was illegal to convert in Nepal during this time and you got baptized in India, right? Um, what really convicted you 
that it was the Catholic Church that you wanted to belong to, and and you took that big step towards baptism. And how did your parents sort of react with their only son um, choosing Catholicism? Before I ever stepped into the Catholic Church, I, I I went into the big church in the middle of Calcutta city. I didn't know the difference between Protestant religions or any other non-Catholic religions or the Catholic religion. So I entered there and, you know, I still just sit down and pray or listen to some person saying something. Uh, and I even attended some sing songs, some open air gatherings of Christians in schools, but it was not Catholic, but it was, I felt it was not deep enough. I didn't feel, feel satisfied. But at that point, spiritually, I felt, uh, you know, I was in the process. And uh, I felt even if I didn't get baptized, it was not as if uh, uh, in me I would be told that you didn't get baptized in time, so you can't enter heaven. It was nothing like that. Then, uh, you know, by chance, uh, by God's gift, I met a very interesting man. He was writing a book about Mother Teresa. He stayed in a central church. He was a parish priest of a central church in Calcutta, a Catholic church named the Sacred Heart Church. And he was writing this book about Mother Teresa and he was a Belgian Jesuit named Edward Lee Jolly. Uh, he's, he's quite popular at that time because he wrote many prayer books and he compiled many prayer books and he also uh, had been in India for decades. So he knew the people and he was a very interesting person to talk to and he said, I, I told him, I know a lot about Christianity by now. But he said, no, you, you know, you got to uh, come and attend Mass uh, every week and uh, you got to learn so many things about the sacraments and everything. Then only you'll be baptized after several months, he said, you know. So uh, yeah, I found that quite deep. I found that he's a mature person who doesn't want to me to just jump into something. Uh, without in a superficial way. So uh, with great reverence, I learned about Mother Mary and the saints and uh, feasts and uh, uh, so all the other beautiful things that the Catholic Church had. So, yeah, it was all a gift. Yes, in Nepal, it was illegal. So, my, I mean, my parents told me, you know, you believe in whatever you want, but, you know, if you are baptized, be, be, make sure that you will have a social... Uh, you'll be a social outcast, you know. So, and they, they thought I was, uh, they didn't understand Catholicism to that level. They said that if you are, take it as a hobby, fine, you know, but if you really get into it, then, uh, you know, it, it might cause problems for you. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, hard for them when I said, look, uh, you know, I, I have to communicate my experience in some way and baptism is going to help me communicate my experience to my friends, to people I love, saying that who I am. So at least they'll respect me for at least communicating my experience. So being, apart from being, having many facets of symbolism, baptism also was a way of communication for me. And uh, and uh, I just went ahead with it, yes. Even though uh, I knew that there would be, there were still people in jail in Nepal at that time. And, uh, and people were getting arrested. I knew, I knew that. But, uh, you know, my case was a slightly different because I was from a high caste family, educated from a, not from a village. So uh, I just went ahead and did it. And I said, I'll deal with whatever comes later. How has Jesus asked you to sort of serve and use your gifts or your talents in the last decade or um, since, since your return to Nepal, really? After I returned, I, uh, I started thinking of what I should do. So uh, I went to a pre-novitiate and a one year in the novitiate with the Jesuits. And uh, I came back from that uh, and I w worked with the mentally handicapped. Uh, I worked for, with, the, I volunteered with the mentally handicapped school in the, uh, that the missionaries at that time, Marinol Fathers from America, they had just opened the first day school for the mentally handicapped very near to my house. So I worked with the children there, taught them sp sports. And I also was the coach for the mentally handicapped. And I led the first Nepali uh, mentally handicapped team 
to the United States for the Special Olympics. That was in nineteen in the nineteen eighties. You know, after that, uh, I I took up uh, Catholic media, print media. I was uh, chief re reporter and bureau chief for the Asian Catholic News in Nepal for many years, for more than twenty years. And I also work in the editorial offices in Bangkok for the Asian Catholic News Agency. I also for the worldwide uh, Union of Catholic International Press. I was the South Asian president and all that. And later, in, at the uh, in the local level, uh, the Catholic Church organizations, uh, even the Catholic Church itself, has to be registered as an NGO in Nepal. So. I'm in the board of uh, all these organizations now. And uh, apart from that, I, uh, me and my wife, Carol, we um, uh, are very active and we are like the lay leaders for the this Couples for Christ group. And Couples for Christ group, we try to include uh, all people who are just converted and so that they can learn more by mixing more, praying more, singing more, sharing more. So my time is just taken up by that. And it's been 40 years since I've been baptized. And I tell you, uh, is, uh, I've just been busy, you know. How would you encourage Christians, Catholics all over the world um, to sort of have the kind of courageous faith and zeal um, as the disciples of Christ should, no matter what kind of struggles they're facing? Yes, we should be inspired, especially with our recent history, because people have really suffered. People have been tortured to bring our faith to us. It may be like we can just press a button and get all the information at uh, instantly, but to bring that information, to get that inspiration, uh, the message, people took trouble, people left their homes. Uh, like the, the first white people that came to Nepal were on their way to Tibet. They came from Rome, and when they started from Rome, like if 10 people started, few of them died on the way, even before reaching here. Even reaching here was an achievement, and they encountered every, everything that could be thought of. They climbed the high Himalayan mountains and passes to go into Tibet, and they lost their fingers, and they still continued. They got persecuted, but they still continued till an ounce of energy was left. And we should remember people like this. One of my favorite quotes from the book of Esther is, perhaps you were born for a time such as this. And I wanted to ask you, Chandra, if you feel like you can relate to that quote, if you feel like it is true that you were born for a time such as this, here and now, and if there's anything specific you feel God calling you to in these difficult times. My uh, calling, I feel, is to just carry on what I'm doing faithfully and uh, not be discouraged so that uh, the, the fear of Christianity, the misunderstanding of Christianity goes away. Not only among the Hindus and the Buddhists and the Muslims, but even among the non-Catholic Christians. You know? I think we, uh, all of us Catholics, have a duty to uh, explain to the, the thousands and thousands of new converts in Nepal, what Catholicism really is. That it's not just idol worship and um, rituals, but it's something well, well beyond that. And uh, we have the duty to explain the richness of the sacraments. And one, the, only the religious clerical side cannot do it. So you know, we, I think, especially people like me, have a responsibility. So thank you so much for opening our eyes and setting our hearts on fire, um, just with conviction, a conviction that I think we all need. Um, and also for making us aware of the struggles that many Catholics face around the world. Thank you very much. And thank you everyone for joining us today. We can't wait to see you next week here on Jesus My Savior with Shalom World. I'm Veronica Stack, your host, God bless. Someone who's...
uh, used media a lot in evangelization. So I believe in the importance of Catholic radio, Catholic TV, Catholics using the new media. And I encourage everyone to watch Shalom TV. I think it's a great vehicle of evangelization. And God bless all of you.